Hey everybody, Jacob here with a special video for those amplified cellists out there. If you're like me, you probably have a realist pickup installed on your cello right now. But I didn't know until very recently that there are two secret ninja tips that you can use or share with your uh, violin maker that can completely change the tone and the quality of signal you're getting from your realist pickup. Today, I travel to the house of cellist and bow maker Matt Cooker to show us how to do it. Let's check it out. Oh, and one last thing. These tips do require you to make some permanent changes to your bridge. So for the few cellists out there that really need to take the realist on and off the instrument, which isn't a very good idea anyway because it starts to abrade the top, these tips aren't going to work for you. Hey all you creative string players out there, Jacob back here with you for another edition of the PickupTest.com and today I'm on a very special tone quest at the house of the amazing Matt Cooker. Matt is an amazing cellist, You're far uh, too kind. world class studio artist and probably the most knowledgeable person about bows and cellos that I personally know. Um, and he has generously allowed me to come over here uh, to help talk about and share a discovery he made uh, using uh, the Realist pickup. So tell us a little bit about your journey with the Realist. Pickup. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks for that lovely intro, you're far too kind. But um, so the Realist pickup installation instructions tell you to just loosen the strings a bit on the bass side, right. jack the bridge up and shove the thing under there and you should be good, right? We're going to see how thick this is. I say 1.2 millimeters, 1.22, it says. Now, let's go to the very edge of this and see how big it is. Ooh, 0.82. If you just put a flat bridge on there and that thing is convex lens shaped, you're not going to get adequate contact and it's going to rob you of acoustic response. This is convex lens shaped and that if we want full contact of the bra base bridge foot, we have to create a slight arch underneath the bridge. I see. And like this will probably squish down. It's pretty soft here, but this middle part, it is what it is. That's where the elements are. Okay, this time if I really press on it, I can get it down to 1.19. We'd gotten 1.22 before. Yeah. But still, the fact that it's 83. Whoa. We need to make an arch shape on the underside of the base bridge foot. Mm -hmm. So if we take a bridge off a cello, we're going to hollow it out using a curved object with sandpaper. I usually get Eric Benning to do this because I'm not sure about messing around with bridge feet all that much myself. But Eric I, is I, a very well-known maker here in Los Angeles. Probably the best, yeah. I would say the best, yeah. He made a cello the, that both of us own. And, and like what I would have him do is make a bridge foot that was about 0.9 of a millimeter shorter. Okay. And then he would carve just a little concavity in there so it would accommodate this. What we want to do is ensure a full contact and a very even pressure of the bridge foot on the bass side because that seems to be what robs cellos that use the realist of a, a more natural acoustic sound when the player is trying to use it for like conventional studio work or you know with a close mic or something right. like that. Yeah. But see that I can cram a whole fingernail underneath there. Oh wow. So if you do the installation that the manufacturers recommend, you're gonna have this enormous gap. And there's a, a similar one, maybe a little smaller here, but I still I just got a fingernail under there too. Yeah, right under there, mm -hmm. right? Or you could get a razor blade under there. Yeah. Please don't take razor blades to your cellos, people. I'm uh, like a different case. <laughs> cutting a piece of plastic I'm going to put under that bridge foot so we can gap fill this. I'm going to take the back side of this. So now we're going to put this piece of plastic under this bridge foot. I am again going to lower these strings. Cello, I'm sorry. Just like when I prune my agaves, I always apologize to them when I'm cutting them. Okay, those are way down now and I ought to be able to just lift this up. Uh, a little more. I love that sound. 
Let's put this here and then slide the whole business under there. There we go. That's what we wanted. And now we're gonna make sure it's really in the right place because we want it to stay put. It's right halfway through there. This is right halfway through there. The sound post has stayed up the whole time. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can kind of be your own violin maker. Like that little notch is not just a joke. That's supposed to tell you like about halfway where yeah, the halfway bridge where the center is, is supposed to go. Okay, so now we got that. And we're gonna take some highly liquid super glue and a toothpick. And we're gonna gap fill this. Is there a certain brand of super glue? Oh, we're talking well, about? this one is Loctite, which is a common one that you can buy. But so I'm going to touch it right here. I want it to soak in. Right there, I'll take this bit that I spilled and I'll put that here. Sorry, cello. I feel bad about that. And then back here, we're going to touch it. See, that's pretty soaked down now. The only part I need to get is over here, so I'm going to do that now. And you want to be careful. You do never want to get this on the surface of an instrument with varnish. So, See that liquid look right there? So now we're just going to wait like two minutes to make sure everything cures. Then I'm going to pull that piece of plastic out of there, and this cello is going to sound even better than it did. That's how it's done, you know, wow, so man. now we're dry, you know, and I'm going to pick this up, pull that out of there. See, with absolutely no damage to the top, we have now gap filled all the little spots in here. And this gauge pickup, we have lined it up right with the wire. It's sort of an asymmetrical looking pickup, but we've got the meaty part in there. Yeah. So now let's go in here and retune it once again. Sorry to make everybody go through that. So what a lot of you guys are probably wondering is, is how much of a difference does Matt's solution really make? Like how much of a difference would it make on your cello or maybe just on a factory instrument. So what we decided to do is bring in a very cheap German student cello uh, that I own with a Realist pickup and we're going to install it the way you probably did. Give it a listen and then we're going to let Matt work his magic and we'll let you hear the difference for yourself. Let's check it out. So we just used these tuners here to tune this cello up after we had it way down to get the pickup under there. And what we've done essentially is to take the bridge and yank it this way. And so I'm going to now look at this bridge and go, whoa, hey Jake, when you look at this, don't you notice that this side is heading up toward the nut faster than this side is? You see how it's slanted a little bit yep. like that? Mm -hmm. This is very common among all string players. Now point that camera over to any electric guitar and let's look at the lowest string and look at the bridge. The lowest string always has a longer string length, correct? Mm. So that we can have our fifths and our chords be in tune. Right. So now I'm going to fix this. And I'm just going to take it like this and hope that somebody's taken a number one lead pencil and greased up these grooves. Right, which there's they some graphite there. But I'm going to do this anyway. <laughs> I'm going to take it like this. I'm bracing it hard with my body. And I'm somebody who's got like really strong hands. And I'm going to shove it back like this. Now, let's look at it again. Okay. Does that look better to you? That does. A lot, right? Uh -huh. See, when you look at it this way, the back side of the bridge is flat. So we're relatively happy with that. In order to test things out, I recorded the realist before going over to Matt's house with the standard setup that I had on before. Now that I just came home from Matt's, I'm going to play the same three excerpts again see if you can hear the difference. Again, this is just the realist going direct into my Apogee converters. No mics, no tricks.
I also want to tell you about a few other changes that happened after Matt's installation that you wouldn't be able to hear on this recording. For one thing, the acoustic tone was drastically improved. And even though the subtle changes in bridge placement that Matt made could account for some of this, I've got to say that I've never really been satisfied with the acoustic sound of my instruments after putting on a realist. And I've done it on several of my cellos with professional luthiers doing the work. There was always just a little bit of a diminishment in the tone and the instruments just didn't speak as freely. And I've got to say that as far as this instrument goes, I've never been more happy with the balance of acoustic and amplified sound. It feels like 97% of what this cello was before the Realist was installed, and I think the Realist sounds pretty good too, but I'll let you decide that for yourself. Well, I hope you enjoy this video, and please hit like and subscribe below to help spread the word and support our work. We're not a shop, and we don't do any affiliate marketing or any stuff like that. Everything we do here is exclusively for the benefit of the string community, our members, and to push creative string playing forward. So thanks for helping us out with that, and we'll see you next time.